Hi, my name is Logan Klaus. I'm a singer, producer, and songwriter from the Billboard 500 Club's private mentorship program with Adam McInnes. Thank you so much for tuning into the Music Industry Contact YouTube channel where we do hit song breakdowns, demo critiques, and have a wealth of music industry-related information for you to check out at any time. Today we're breaking down 17's Hot. I'm very excited. I've never heard this song before. As you know, we can't monetize these videos, so we would love to have you as part of our Patreon Golden Ear community, which gives you exclusive early access content, including videos and polls for selecting our next song breakdowns. If you're already supporting, thank you so much. And if you'd like to join, just click the link in the description below. All right, let's get into 17's Hot. I am very excited about this. I have not heard this before. Uh, it's always a surprise. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into. Looks like we're on uh, the set of the original Star Wars right now, so far in the music video. Um, but I'm sure that'll change quickly. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's uh, get right into this song here. I won't uh, hold off anymore. Here we go. Okay. All right. Wow. Oh, I love this. This is awesome. Whoa. Okay. This is amazing. Wow. Okay. This is crazy lyrically, too. Okay. This is amazing. Jeez. It's a long hook. I love it. I love this. Okay, before we get into the rest of the song, there is so much going on here. There's a lot of really cool stuff. I love this vibe. Every single song is always its own universe, its own thing. Um, I love like the Mad Max vibe that they're pulling from here. That's just fantastic. Uh, it's very, uh, you know, very Road Warrior or Fury Road, I guess, um, like post-apocalypse. But the sound choice is like Miserloo by Dick Daniels or I think that's who it is. I uh, like that. I think it's in like Reservoir Dogs or if you've ever seen any of like the Tarantino movies. It does look like a Tarantino movie even. Now that I think about it, it gives me that gritty vibe and, and the music video is incredible. But uh, I like the imagery just visually. Um, besides that, the production has so much cool stuff. So I think we should just get right into it and go uh, from the start of the video here and, um, you know, go down section by section. Before I start, though, I just like to do this in every single video, teach everybody that I possibly can about the power of threes because it's it's um, in our biology. It's in our DNA. We just love this subconscious transitioning. Um, and basically what it is is where you do something one time, change it up a little bit on the second. You don't have to, but you can. And then do again the same on the third and then change it up completely on the fourth time. So, you know, it's a Led Zeppelin thing. It's all a lot of rock and roll music, but it takes place um, subconsciously in pretty much every melody line. That's one of the formulas. Another formula for it is same, same, completely different on the third and then same or different again on the fourth time. So two formulas there. But so between those three formulas total, it makes up 
I'm not going to lie. Just now that you've heard it, you can't unhear it. Just continue to listen for it, and I'm sure that you will. Um, we're going to we're gonna pick it out here. I already know that. So let's, uh, let's just spin right into this from the start of the song again. What is going on with the sand? It's just wild. So there was a perfect example of the power of threes there. Da na 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 da na da na right so da na da na da na da na or whatever it is full melody right but they repeat on the third the second first and uh, that's a lot it's too many numbers anyway um you know what I'm trying to say uh let's let's keep listening through that I actually I love how you know, um, one of the parts of the formula that I'm starting to see is starting the song with something that is completely recognizable as this song. If you let the listener know that it's this song, and I mean, there's a lot of aspects to do it. It's like starting with a vocal chop, starting with um, the strum, starting with uh, any kind of sound or noise that just grabs attention completely. And you're like, oh, what's that? I want to keep listening. Who is that? I wonder whose voice that is. Oh, that's got a lot of personality. Oh, I like who they are. I like this sound. So just thinking about how can we grab attention right off the bat here. Um, yeah, let's get, let's let's take a listen to this verse again and see if there's anything else we can pick out. Wow. Okay, so um, first off, I'm assuming that this like door swinging sound is n only for the music video. So, but I mean, it's okay. I like watching the music videos anyway. But if you notice that it was like da 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 da, and then they did the juicy thing on the third time, and then change it up a little bit on the fourth time. So there we go. I again, have a power of three melody going on in the vocals. Um, as far as the music goes, it's very like. I mean, guitar tone wise, uh, it's like obviously a Stratocaster going through some kind of, you know, like a single coil pickup doesn't have to be a Stratocaster, but a single coil pickup going through some kind of toaster or Fender Twin amp. There's a little bit of spring reverb on it you can hear. Just very like that classy 1950s, what would you call it? Like Buddy Holly, Elvis, you know, sound tone, like very classy um, thing. And then they're mixing it with this you know uh edm rap thing and it's working it's really working it's super cool i've never heard anything like this very creative for sure um yeah honestly i think the bass and the drums are pretty self-explanatory and there's not a whole lot going on in there but um it just fits uh let, i'm curious about the kick tone though <laughs> I was uh, in my head. I was wondering if it was going to be more like an analog kick, um, or if it was going to be, you know, punch a EDM kick. And I, I, I appreciate that they used the EDM style thing or the poppier style kick rather than it sounding like it's in a room and it's got a little bit of, you know, the snare buzz mixed in with it. But uh, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, okay, sweet. Let's keep going into this next section here. One thing I want to point out, um, it's. I am honestly think that it's just part of the formula as well, but having a verse that's kind of got an A section and a B section and they contrast each other, or if you're going to uh, flesh it out even further, it's like A, B, and those contrast each other, and C and D contrast each other, and C and D also contrast A and B. So if we want to get crazy with contrast, I, I'm not going to lie, I, I think talk about pretty much the exact same things in every single video just in the context of the song they're amazing lessons to learn it's just like so mind-blowing how creatively you can use these that the concepts are like in themselves are just basic structures just like hammer and a nail but they're just what can you build out of that and it's incredible 
thinking about the way that the first half of the verse contrasts the second half, whether that's vocal melody, whether that's singy to rappy, whether that's call and response to single vocal to, you know, there's a million ways that you can do it. And it's cool to listen for the different combinations of those things and how they're creatively using it in the style of the song, as well as to fit the lyrics and, you know, where the punch words are. Um, but either way, uh, let's uh, keep going into the second half of this verse here. I'm sorry, can you turn? Okay, so honestly, I thought that that was the hook when I first heard it because it feels like a hook. It's very full. It's got the sub bass, lots of singers. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on in the production here. I just want to listen to it one more time. Just... Can you hear that? Um, the like wop wop. And it's kind of panning between each ear, which is pretty cool. Putting that out there, that's something fun. Uh, as far as it goes, it's pretty like obvious how they took the first verse and added a few more layers in. It's the same riff. Da -na -na -na, and uh, it just got more intense. So in that way, we already know a great tactic for contrast is just adding more elements so add that to the tool list i guess we're going into the pre-chorus here it's very interesting because it it feels like a hook there's nothing wrong with that actually i think it's great that if well if you look at for example a song like late night talking by harry styles that's basically three choruses just one of them has a little bit less elements than the other ones and they just their whole structure is literally abc abc instead of verse pre-chorus verse pre-chorus it's like they are their own equal sections more logically. I thought that very different structure wise from this, but just considering it that if each section can just sound like its own chorus, you're going to have people singing along the whole time. great so i love that pre-chorus for the fact that they just pull out a lot of elements and it's more emotional and singy and it's more um contrasting emotionally rather than production wise because I, I don't know if you noticed but the snare stayed the same i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure it stayed the same from the verse all the way into the pre and that bop bop like it was really reliant on what was going on in the vocal melody rather than what was going on in the production and you know a lot of tracks have to rely on the production for the pre-course but i i appreciate that they were just like we're just gonna let the the vocals take here and we don't need to add a whole lot of new elements um and then you'll find i think that this chorus is a combination of both of those two feelings the emotional kind of longer legato notes and the more intense kind of uh punchy notes we'll find a good balance of it here in the chorus Yeah, wow. You know, it's very cool the way that they're producing this out. They don't really want the sections to... They want the sections to feel different from each other, but they're not afraid to just use the title in every single section. I think that's super cool. So you'll notice that, um, honestly, the, fir the second half of the first verse felt more like a chorus than this, but 
they are a minute into the song and they're like, well, we should contrast what we've already got. And going for this tighter, more sub bass feel is cooler. I think it's uh, they did a very like, wow. Also, sorry, distracted by this music video, this massive hand there. I don't know if that's animated in. I mean, it does look like it was animated in probably, but that is just that's just cool. I, there's so much going on. I didn't even notice the first time. That's wild. Um, unless that's a real place, because if it is, then I got to go there. Besides that, um, so contrast, how did the chorus contrast the verses? The pre was very singy, very legato. The verse was, you know, full production, sub bass, full beat and groove. Whereas this chorus was more sensual, reserved, and I guess you would say more, you know, tribal and more kind of about the... I mean, sensuality is a good. It's just a good way of saying it. So, how are they contrasting these emotions? The fir, the pre is very, uh, you know, emotional, very uh, desiring, and very kind of. Uh, I guess you would call it mm, like begging in a way. I mean, I'm not sure lyrically, but it feels as though it's like this painful but like beautiful thing. And then in the verse, it's very like badass kind of. Um, uh, like overtly sensual and then when we get to the chorus it's more of like a reserved one on one feeling right so I just find that really interesting how minimal the changes are but they're communicating these emotions much more vividly than what I'm used to hearing Um, yeah it's very interesting let's uh, keep going throughout the rest of this song here. You know they body like hot 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 Let's go a little further ahead. See, it's weird because compared to the rest of the song, this could be the verse. But they're using it like the hook. And it's just like this. What's cool about this song is how the difference, how it, they're doing basically the opposite of what you'd expect them to be doing in different sections. Like I would have assumed using this production for the verse, but instead they use the chorus production for the verse. And um, yeah, it's just wild. This is cool stuff. Something interesting to think about. And I was also wrong. I was expecting more of like a legato, some legato sections in here. Maybe just to break up the da, 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 da. Like it's very powerful and stampy. And I, yeah, I, I love that actually. That's a much better decision than what I was expecting. Defying expectations. I mean, that's got to be part of the tool list, even. Um, grabbing attention is synonymous with defying expectations, in a way, actually. It's like this balance. You don't want to be too out there so that it's random, but you also want to keep things interesting in a way that's still cohesive. So they're killing it right now. I mean, obviously they are. How many views has this video got? Probably 76 million views, of course. This is probably... I've never heard any other 17 songs, but these guys absolutely rock either way. Um, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Okay, that was a great example of everything that we've talked about so far. So the guy started off the verse with a very low, sexy to like sexy voice, and then the second half, this guy comes in all beautiful and flowy, totally in contrast to each other. Like if you played one of those and said, "How do you contrast that?" you would say, "Oh, do exactly what the other guy did." Right? That's just amazing. I mean, we're still falling on the the same production as the hook, even right? There's not a whole lot that's changed, I don't think. Um, but yeah, that was just amazing. And then for the ending there, I wanted to, you know, another tactic for, you can't use it too many times in a song, but when you do use it and if you use it at just the right time, it can have a huge effect on, you know, how the song is playing out. But basically the kind of pull out piece, the like where you are going and going and going and then on the fourth bar you could you could call it you know a pull out section or or taking a breath before diving back into the next piece here so it's a great example um right here this vocalist this guy nice right 
Now, so we've got two individual singers, right? Uh, or I guess there was like three singers there. Um, I One of the things that interests me so much about these groups is how they show off each of the individual voices in the group, right? And I mean, I talked about this a lot in the last video that I did. Um, it sees icy about how all the girls are wearing different brands on their t-shirts. All of their girl, all the girls are like separate entities and the record labels are, you know, when they, when they split up and now they're filling six stadium tours eventually, like it's just the natural evolution of a group like this to split up and become its own thing where now a record label that used to be making money off of one performance with six people is now making money off of six different performances in completely different parts of the world and they're just each of them they're trying to build up this massive group of entities and and eventually release them as solo artists right and so all of that the future of these groups is dependent on how they're exemplifying these voices and i mean i don't want to be like a doomsayer and say oh it's all about money it's all about this but you know i'm not i i it does make more sense from a business perspective to split up a group like this just putting it out there i hope these guys don't split up it's great what they're doing but you do kind of have to think about it from a business perspective in a way too um on the side of all of that stuff how are they exemplifying the voices that are being used here and how each of these singers are a brand, right? If each of these singers is a brand, what's the brand's personality? What clothing lines associate with this? What um, perspective that's unique that they have compared to the rest of the group members so that not one group member is taking the stage more than the other one, right? Like... Um, there's always it's it's kind of sad to say this, but there's always like a, a fan favorite in each of these groups. Right. Um, and I think like eventually the brand becomes aware of it. Um, I mean, I don't follow enough of these bands in their entire careers to know, but it's just something interesting to think about. How are they placing each singer and how are they portraying each singer's personality and how are they portraying each individual singer's brand, right? Compared to the full brand, which is 17, right? The umbrella brand, like people are always going to remember One Direction, but people still love Harry Styles. Like, and they'll, he'll never be able to get rid of that. And I think that's great. You know, he started in a place and they had five careers that split off of it. And each one of them is making great music now. But I just mean it's a natural evolution of these kinds of groups. So, for example, here, back to the song, another, sorry, but just going wait so many circles. Um, <laughs> back to the song. Um, they had three, they just featured three singers there in the span of like, I don't know what that would be like eight bars around there in that area. And, um, now they're going to try and contrast those three singers with a new section here. So let's hear about this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, sweet. So there's six singers in this band, I guess. And this guy's the auto tune guy. That's cool. This guy is the super crazy vocal range guy. And this last guy sadly only got two lines. You know what to do. You know what to do. That's okay. Maybe he's featured on another song. Who knows? But I'm just trying to see the dynamic that the singers are kind of doing here. I'm sure as a fan, you're like excited about all of them singing, you know, but I just kind of want to zoom in on what, what the perspective is that the producers have to work with here and how they're treating each of their vocals, how their melody lines are playing with each other, how the singer's personalities are coming out. Like even, I mean, obviously we have a visual aid here, which is great that you can see their face delivering this um, line here. And, but uh, either way, this is just fantastic. This is a great, this is a great song. Um, and we're going back into that hook. I, I love how the verses are big and the chorus is reserved. Um, and that, that chorus is money. And this is like super tribal, super sexy. I love it. It's fantastic. Okay. 
Wow. So that, that hook was fantastic. Um, I was just totally engulfed by this guy's gorgeous red hair. Like, uh, this guy uh, doing the what My Chemical Romance thing. I love that. That's so sweet. Um, let's go into the bridge. I just got so lost on that thought trail for a second. But the chorus is great. The chorus slaps. I mean, what more do we need to talk about? I'm. There's lots that we could pick out, but, I mean... Let's just take it. Let's just let's just hear going into the bridges. See if anything really jumps out. But I think it's quite obvious the ways that they're contrasting, um, just by removing instruments and you know switching up the tone of the singers. Even you'll find like all of them are very lightly singing, very breathy and sexy, very intimately compared to the rest of the song where they're you know whatever they're doing sort of thing so just keeping that in mind um how are we keeping all the sections interesting how are we grabbing attention how are we keeping attention here it comes this music video is intense Whoa, did you see that? Even the, I think that the black line, yeah, so we were in super wide. So even the video is communicating the same emotion that they're trying to do here. They're trying to get intimate and emotional. They're trying to get focused. They're trying to draw you in from a different perspective. They've been kind of hitting you with all this stuff and this, this whole world. Now we're gonna take a break from that world. Just go, you know, look at it from the outside and we're gonna come back to it here. So. Even the the fact that the video is zooming in here. Watch the black lines. See that? Even the video is communicating the same emotion that the production and the singers are trying to communicate right now. It's just crazy. I mean, obviously, that's the job of the music video producers. But still, just keeping that in mind, how well thought, well planned this is, how intensely meticulous and perfect this song is, all the way down to just... These these are mega icons that they're building and there's so much to be stolen from these mega icons and so much to think about um, as some as someone who's like just, you know, learning, just trying to just trying to, you know, discover who you are as an artist. Look at these mega brands and how they're communicating these emotions and how they're putting their artists on pedestals and communicating the emotions so well. There's so much to be learned from these videos. Um, yeah, but let's take a listen to this bridge. I'm excited to hear it. Wow. This is crazy. That was gorgeous. That bridge was fantastic. I don't know if they showed a new singer we haven't heard yet either, but it's just wonderful. Yeah, the, that, I mean, okay, so nice long riser, same snare, the super wide high harmonies, second half, the kick comes in in the second half. We're building tents. We're pulling back the elastic band back to that hot, hot section. So, um, you're noticing that the low end is coming in. The vocals are getting more and more intense. They're building this tension up, right? So they're thinking we have direction. We have a direction to go. We have somewhere to move to. They move there. And once they get there, that elastic band has to like slap you in the face. So that's honestly, I don't know if I've been saying the elastic band thing. I don't know if I explained it, but Think about this like a slingshot on your forehead. The chorus should hit... Imagine you're holding a slingshot up to your forehead, right? And the entire song, you're pulling this slingshot back to slap yourself in the face with it. And it's got to be the most intense pain you've ever felt in your whole life. That's got to be... Like, you got to be whipping that ele like elastic band bang, and you got to be knocking the audience out. When that impact hits, if your chorus doesn't hit they're going to skip the song. What's the point of listening to a song where the chorus doesn't absolutely melt you, you know? So 
Think about this energy like this here. Let's listen to this bridge again and really listen to the ways that the the elements are coming in. And and there's always something new. There's always a new element that's entering, even if it's just the background vocals, even if it's extra harmonies, um, and just how meticulous they are about placing these elements in just the right spot to pull that elastic band back just the perfect amount, right? Let's listen to this again. Hot, hot. Nice. Wop, wop. On the third time. And then on the fourth time, they even pull the drums out. So if I'm going to break this down for you, it's, there's four different pieces of this. Starts with just the synth and the vocal. The second half, the um, part two is when the background vocals come in. The melody is getting more intense. Part three is when the kick drum comes in and the vocal, new vocalist enters, right? And the fourth, um, you'll also hear that bop, bop coming in there on the third time. And then on the fourth time, they even do the pull out, like take a breath thing. So that when the chorus hits, it's like the frequency is back in. So th obviously the biggest way that we can contrast is through frequency. If you are singing something very light and quiet, and then all of a sudden you get the Michael Bay, Wah! shake the roof, right? That's huge contrast. I don't think that we sh that you should do that in that intensely. It still has to feel natural, right? But pulling all the elements out, taking a breath, so that there's a small situation there where there's nothing going on, and you have complete contrast to all of the frequencies being back in in this chorus here. So this chorus, I'm assuming, is also going to be the biggest of the three we've heard so far. Oh, great. The sun is exploding. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, this has been incredible so far. I can't believe this. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, wow. This, yeah, this song has so much going on. I don't even know where to start. Um, but oh well, I say that after 32 minutes of recording. But <laughs> um, before I give my final thoughts on this song, I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Um, and if you enjoyed this video and it brought you any kind of um, value or new perspective or tool it would be amazing if you liked and subscribed hit the notification bell so th there's lots of producers and singers breaking down songs and providing different um, things that not all of us will be able to catch totally different perspectives Adam's doing videos too and um, we just really appreciate you, the reception and and uh, you know tell us anything that I you think I missed um, but Either way, if you're looking to take this any deeper, I really can't recommend enough the producer breakdowns on the Billboard500.com. Um, you basically go through and make an ingredients list of some of the best producers of all time. So the ones that provided me the most value for sure were Calvin Harris, Phineas, Rick Rubin, Diplo, and Pharrell. Um, they're great. Adam goes through, takes you through it. We build a toolbox, and at the end of it, um, we actually end up trying to make songs that are using that ingredients list. So the these producers, some of them have been around for decades, right? But And a lot of them are using the same formulas for decades and just kind of evolving those formulas. And that's how they're able to stay on the charts for such a long period of time and have longevity in their career. They're not... These guys are... Uh, I mean, I guess Phineas is pretty new, but his just his was mind-blowing in its own right. Um you know what are the tools and formulas that are keeping people in the industry for so long and how can we apply those as just some great limitations um for it, whatever's going on so um 
Also, if you're a musician, producer, songwriter, or singer looking to grow in any way, the Billboard 500 Club is for you. I've been a part of it for about 20 months now, and I've seen more improvement in myself than I ever thought was possible. Um, in the entire time that I was outside of the club, I had no accountability. I had no clear goals. I had no um, per people or in my life that were like actually doing it and could give me guidance on direction, right? If that's what you're looking for, um, the network is incredible, the information is incredible, and the opportunities are like nowhere else on the internet. There's over 70 mentors who are some of the most successful in the industry, teaching up and coming musicians, producers, singers, executives, whatever you're looking for, it's there, right? Um, don't wait too long. There's a limited capacity. Once we reach 500 members, we're going to kind of close it off to the public, and it'll be its own ecosystem or entity of um, intentional and, uh, you know, highly successful um, mentors and teachers hopefully that's the goal right give it a few years we'll see where it ends up but right now it's really making waves we're really seeing a huge difference in the careers of the individuals who are part of the group and I can't recommend it enough um, besides all that my name is Logan Close um, my social media is down in the description um, this song was fantastic i was not expecting the structure of this song i think the big takeaway from this is to you know what why not just unleash the arsenal right in uh, verse 1b just go for it why not you know and and make the chorus more of a down site type of tribal sort of experience and in and you know defy the expectation of the listener i was still enjoying it and listening the whole time and and had a great experience with the song despite it not being the exact pop structure that we're all kind of used to hearing too you know like um how many hooks can we fit into a song how can we keep the attention how can we contrast um all great things and this song is a great example of using formulas in a com in a very creative way the sound choice is unique it puts you in, in its own complete universe and i mean yeah that's it's it's amazing it's worth all of the 80 million views or whatever it's got here um and i'm definitely going to apply these concepts and think about these concepts more in depth as i'm going about any of the work that i'm doing in the future but uh yeah anyway um thank you so much for watching uh consider subscribing to the music industry contact youtube channel following on facebook check out the courses in the billboard 500 club um or sorry billboard500.com you'll enjoy it uh, i can't recommend it enough anyway it has been a pleasure thank you very much have a great evening